In this video, we're going to be talking about the rule in Strong and Bird. And this forms the fourth video in a set of videos about the circumstances in which equity will allow the transfer of legal title to occur, even though the formality requirements have not been complied with. And we've looked at conveyance of land to a minor, gifts made in contemplation of death, and failure to make an effective gift, the every effort rule. And this is the fourth one, the rule in Strong and Bird. And then the next video will be the last video on that particular mini-series. So, the rule in Strong and Bird. Now, this is also known as the fortuitous vesting rule, and it is based on the common law rule that a person cannot bring an action against him or herself. Okay, And when a person dies, uh, their property becomes the property of their executors. If a person is an executor of the estate and a debtor of the testator, they cannot, as executor of the estate, bring an action against themselves as debtor. This means that any debts owed by an um, executor are, under common law, unenforceable. So, at common law, it had long been established that a debt can no longer be enforced after the death of the creditor if the creditor had appointed the debtor as one of his executors. For example, a woman with three children makes a will leaving all her property to be shared equally between her children. She appoints the eldest child as an executor. Ten years later, she dies. She lent the eldest child £30,000 as deposit on the house. The loan was interest-free and the eldest child was paying it back over 20 years. The eldest child should still owe £15,000. At her death, the woman's estate was worth £150,000. Should each child receive £50,000 or should the eldest receive £40,000 and the, others, the other two £55,000? Now, at common law, the appointment of the eldest child as executor releases the debt. So, in other words, at common law, because the eldest child, who was in debt to the now dead creditor, was appointed the executor, that debt can no longer be enforced. So, the eldest child would not have to pay back that money. In equity, the rule in Strong and Bird provides that the debt is released only if that was the intention of the testator and the intention continued until the date of death. So in, the ca in, in this case, it was stated that although at common law the debtor is released of his debts, at equity the debtor nevertheless, nevertheless remains liable. Okay, And Jessel held in this particular case, a strong on Bert, that Equity will deny any claim by those in, entitled to the debt. Um, uh, sorry, held that equity will deny any claim by those entitled to the debt under the will of the creditor, where the creditor intended to release the debt during his lifetime and up and up until the moment of his death had a continuing intention to do so. So, for the debtor to be released of the debts when appointed as, as executor, the following requirements must be fulfilled. There must be evidence that the donor intended to make an immediate inter vivos gift, so that is a gift whilst the donor was alive, a testamentary gift would fail due to non-compliance with the formality requirements, and secondly, there must be evidence of an intention the gift continues throughout the entire period up until the donor's death. So, although at common law the debt will be discharged in equity, that is the rule in Strong and Bird, the fact you are the executor will not release you automatically from your debts. You must first have evidence the testator intended to release you from your debts. And so, let's look at the case itself. So, Strong and Bird. In Strong and Bird, a man owed his stepmother £1,100. His stepmother lived with him and had agreed to pay rent of £212 per quarter. It was agreed that this should be reduced to £100 per quarter until the debt was paid off. The stepmother paid the reduced rent for two quarters, but later started paying the full amount. At the death of the stepmother, £900 remained unpaid. It was held that the stepmother intended to make a gift of the money owing and that intention remained at her death. Accordingly, the appointment of the stepson as executor released the debt. So... Just to reiterate, 
In this case, Bird had borrowed £1,100 from his stepmother, with whom he shared um, the house, okay? She paid him a quarterly rent to stay in the house, so it was agreed that he, Bird, would repay the £1,100 loan by reducing her rent by £100 per instalment. She paid the reduced rent for two quarters, but when payment was due on the third quarter, the stepmother insisted upon paying the full rent without deduction. She continued to make full payments of the rent until her death four years later, whereupon Bird was appointed to be the sole executor of his stepmother's estate. The stepmother's next of kin, Strong, alleged that Bird ought to repay the £900 balance of the loan that remained. The court held that the stepmother satisfied the requirements of the rule in Strong and Bird. Namely, it was held that the stepmother intended to make a gift of the money owing and that intention remained at her death. Accordingly, the appointment of the stepson as executor released the debt. Released the debt. Okay? And we've also got a case of uh, Stuart, Stuart and McLaughlin, and the principle in Strong and Bird can also be used to complete an imperfect gift. So if a person has a continuing intention to give but does not complete the gift before death, then if the recipient is appointed as executor, legal title is vested in them by operation of law. This is sufficient to complete the gift. So the rule in Strong and Bird extends to gifts and establishes that where an ineffective gift has been made into vivos and the donor maintains up until the time of his death a continuing intention to give that property to the donee, the requirement for the transfer of legal title by donor to donee can be fulfilled if the legal title vests in the donee as executor of the donor by operation of law on the death of the donor. In other words, the appointment by the donor of the intended donee as his executor perfects the intention of the donor and completes the gift, displacing by virtue of being first in time the equity of anyone else who is entitled to the property in question under the will of the donor. And this was held in Stuart in this case here, where a husband had bought some bonds which he intended to give to his wife. However, he died before they had actually been delivered to um, him, and so he was unable to assign them to her in, in his lifetime. Her appointment as one of the five executors, coupled with his continuing intention to give the bonds to her, was held to be sufficient to perfect the gift. Okay, so that is the end of the rule in Strong and Bird, or the end of the fortuitous uh, vesting rule, depending on how you want to see it. And that is the end of the fourth of these circumstances in which equity will step in and equity will allow the transfer of legal title to occur even though the formality requirements have not been complied with. In the next video, we're going to look at a fifth and final circumstance where this will happen and where equity will step in, and that is where the donor is also a trustee. But if you have any questions about this video, please leave a comment below and I'll get straight back to you. Don't forget to give this video a like and make sure you subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much for watching.